Hello, hello, hello. It's Attorney Mike Gravel coming to you from Chicago as usual. I tried I tried to get the uh verdict this morning. That that didn't happen, but what I got instead was just pure gold out of Judge McNally's room. Pure solid gold. Also, a fun little nugget to take us in from 3B. Let's do it. Eva, you're local. Uh, I've known you for a long time. You got a lot of baggage you're carrying around from childhood. You got out of this bad relationship. Does that over over? Yes. He hasn't sneaked back in like a camel with his nose under the no, tent. Geez. All right, Bank of America versus Patrick Shanley, 22T3301. And also we have a counter complaint filed by Patrick Shanley versus Bank of America. And also what was entitled a counter complaint, he starts Patrick strong. Shanley versus Weber and Olsies, PC, Michael Olsies. Suzanne Barda, Michael Kirschenheider, Jeffrey Werber, and Sandra Francis individually, which really should have been entitled a third party. Your appearance? Good morning, Judge McNally. Suzanne Barda, P65425, on behalf of Bank of America. Your name, sir? I, Patrick Shanley, and before this court, my special appearance Hang on. without waiving Hang on. any rights, remedies, Mr. Shanley. or defenses. Mr. Shanley. I am not waiving defects of services, nor am I submitting to the jurisdiction of the court or the alleged plaintiff in this cover of law action. I didn't ask you that. I, I reserve all my God given rights. I waive. Let me let you in on the secret. I'm going to listen to you, but I'm not going to play games. I asked you for your appearance. I read your briefs, period. I didn't ask you to go on like that. Don't do it again. But you can proceed on your motion to dismiss counterclaim. Congratulations, Mr. Shannon. That's the first time I've used that in all the years. Go ahead. Your Honor, I'm hoping this, this ends today. That there are two motions before you. Um, one is to quash the matter against Weber and Olsies and the five named defendants uh, from my office. I believe the last time you were here, Brother Counsel, Mr. Werber that was here, uh, he advised me that, that you told Mr. Shanley that he needs to hire an attorney um, because he was treading on some, some dangerous um, water. Um, and he hasn't fought, he has not hired an, an attorney. Well, I didn't say he needed to. I strongly suggested yes. that he do that. Because he was treading on some dangerous water in the claims that he's making. Um, we're asking for the matter before Weber and Olsies and the five named attorneys to be dismissed at this time, Your Honor. Um, Let's take, if you don't mind, I'd like to take the motion to dismiss the counterclaim first that was filed and i understand there could be reason for confusion your office filed two separate motions you filed a motion to dismiss the counterclaim which focused on the claim that mr shanley has against bank of america as bank of america being counter defendant and then you filed a motion to quash summons and dismiss 30 third party defendants on the claim that mr Shanley has on the against the law firm Weber and OC's PC PLC, which really should have been, as you know, a, a third party complaint. And then as against the individual lawyers that I already mentioned, uh, uh, which would include yourself, Michael Olsies, Michael Kirschenheider, Jeffrey Werber and Sandra Francis. So let's proceed first. I object. You can object all you want. <laughs> Let's proceed with the motion to dismiss counterclaim. I object. I'm telling him I want him to argue that one first, Mr. Shanley. What is? What are you objecting about? Besides the fact you just want to get loud. I I I have my affidavit before you. The paperwork. That's 
That's what matters in this case. Mr. Shanley, I have two motions. I'm going to listen to what you have to say. I'm telling him I want him to first proceed with his motion to dismiss the counterclaim that they filed pertaining to your claim against Bank of America. Then after that is argued by both parties, he can go on to the motion to quash the summons and, and dismiss the third party uh, purported counter defendants or third party defendants, both the law firm as well as the uh, individual defendants. That's all I'm saying, sir. There's no reason to object about anything here. And by the way, Mr. Barta, on your motion to quash the summons and dismiss all third party defendants, you have an attachment The verification of debt is attached to your motion is set forth. It appears on exhibit one and it is unsigned. And I, it looks like it was going to be at least my copy that was provided to me is unsigned. I'm talking about the verification of debt that appears was going to be signed by somebody from Bank of America. Do you have an executed copy? No, Your Honor, they would not execute that copy. That was provided for by Mr. Shanley. I see. That's an affidavit that he provided that he wanted to sign. I see. Bank of America. I misunderstood. Go with your motion. Your Honor, our motion, we're going to rely on our, our written brief. However, I'm going to make it very short. It, he solely relies on that verification was not met by Bank of America, but Bank of America did validate. I object. He, he can't sir, speak for a sir, fiction. Sir, this is a courtroom when we show one another courtesy. You, you will have an opportunity to respond to whatever he has to say when he's done, okay? Be glad to give you all the time you need. Go ahead. Your Honor, Bank of America is not considered a debt collector, and the FDCPA only pertains to debt collection companies. So the FDCPA does not apply to Bank of America. And his sole claim is that there's a violation of the FDCPA. But if Bank of America were deemed to be a debt collector, they still verified the debt to Mr. Shanley and sent all relative documentation. The fact that they did not provide Mr. Shanley what he believes they should have given him is not a violation in and of itself as well. So, and that's his sole, that's the sole reason he filed his counterclaim against Bank of America. And it just does not hold water at this point. Give me one second. I need this. All right, I'll make it make sense real quick. Uh, th this reminds me of the one we did yesterday. The guy didn't want to pay for a trailer. This guy ran up charges on a credit card. He doesn't want to pay for them. He does a bunch of stupid thing like file counterclaims against people who aren't party to the action. <laughs> but the long and short of it is he's a deadbeat who doesn't want to pay his credit card bill. That's it. And then he, and then he just th throws a bunch of stuff at it to confuse it and slow it down. That's all we got going on. All right, Mr. Shanley, your response. Have you read my affidavit, sir? I'm not a witness. I'm the judge. Of course, I've read everything in this brief. Everything I have to say is in my paperwork in there. <laughs> He's looking great. <laughs> <laughs> the look. So here's what I'm left with. On July 21 of 20, it appears to the court that the defendant counter plaintiff 
entered into a contract with, with plaintiff counter defendant Bank of America. Bank of America provided credit to Mr. Shanley. Defendant made, defendant counter plaintiff made some payments thereon. That forms the basis of a contract. They do not have to produce or provide a written contract. A contract is formed when in a line of, when, when in a credit card situation, somebody utilizes the card, that is when the contract is formed between the parties. On December 5, 22, Bank of America initiated an action against the defendant counter plaintiff. Defendant filed a responsive pleading and a counterclaim against Bank of America. The counterclaim alleges violation of the Fair Debt Collections Practices Act, FDCPA. Also, the um, claim is that Bank of America failed to validate the account. The court is going to rule in favor of Bank of America and dismiss the plaintiff's counter, the plaintiff's, I'm sorry, the defendant's slash counter plaintiff's counterclaim versus Bank of America for the following reasons. Bank of America is a creditor. They are not a debt collector and they're not subject to the FDCPA. Therefore, as such, he failed to state a claim upon which relief can be granted, and their motion is granted pursuant to MCR 2.116C8. Moreover, there's documentation attached to the counter defendant's response that indicates that, that Mr. Um, one of the lawyers, I will find that in a moment. Find that one of the lawyers did in fact send, I'm talking about from the Weber OC's law firm, did in fact send in return a document that would, would have satisfied validation of the debt. Therefore, Pursuant to MCR 2.116 C8 and C10, counter defendant, Bank of America, is entitled to a summary disposition, and again, on the basis that the counter plaintiff failed to state a claim upon which relief could be granted against this particular party and or there's no genuine issue as to any material facts. So I'm granting that motion to dismiss the counterclaim. Now, you can proceed with your motion to dismiss the law firm as well as the individual defendants. Your Honor, that matter, I believe, is in practicing law for, for 20 years is is has never been done before. It's the first time. It's very frivolous. Um, there is no cause of action against Robert Nolsey's. Michael Olsey, Suzanne Barda, Mike Kirschenheider, Jeffrey Werber, and Sandra Francis. Um, and we're relying on that written brief as well. However, we're not only asking for an order dismissing the case against all of the third party defendants to have prejudice, we're also asking uh, for sanctions. <laughs> it's okay. okay. Go ahead, I'm sorry. So we're also asking for sanctions, Your Honor. Um, well, I'm not going to get the sh sanctions unless and until I rule in your favor on this. Do you have any response? You can continue if you're... No, I mean, the only thing I, I would say, Your Honor, is validation uh, took place again. I think that's a sole source is that there's a violation of the FDCPA. Um, the, the validation requested on his documents has a different file number because there's a second case. Um, so we're not even talking about uh, Mr. Shanley's request for validation on this particular case. He put a different file number on it, and that case is coming down the pipeline. 
Um, but as to this case, uh, <laughs> I'm asking Your Honor to, to please rule in our favor and put an end to this. We put a lot of time and effort responding to this frivolous action. Do you have any response? Your Honor, I've submitted my affidavit, which rebutted their Bank of America. Uh huh. My my paperwork reads for itself. All that other stuff was was hearsay. I have this affidavit. Are they going to rebut my affidavit? Okay. Do you have any response to that, Council? Uh, no, Your Honor. Your affidavit talks about being an, you're not an artificial person. Affidavit of status of Patrick Allen Shanley, right? What are, what are they supposed to rebut in here? If they, are you ref, you're referring to your to the affidavit attached to your motion to dismiss, supported by affidavit of that? Patrick yes. Shanley. Okay. All right. <laughs> Well, uh, you guys can have a seat. Again, on this case, motion to quash summons and dismiss all third party defendants. Court finds that on July 21 of 20, defendant and plaintiff entered into a contract. The plaintiff provided credit. Defendant paid some of the monies due and owing on the credit card debt, but defaulted. On December 5, 22, plaintiff initiated an action. Defendant filed a responsive pleading, a counterclaim, and named all lawyers as third-party defendants. Actually, as counter defendants, but it should have been they should have been properly named as third-party defendants. The plaintiff, Bank of America or I should say, in this case, the motion filed by defendant law firm and defendant lawyers, and defendant lawyers claims that the defendant, Mr. Shanley, did not file a third party complaint as required pursuant to MCR 2.204. They allege that the addition of the third party defendants in the counterclaim violates 2.110C as only a cross claim or counterclaim can be filed with an answer. And they further claim that 2.204 requires a separate third party claim. In addition, that they, they claim that Mr. Shanley's counterclaim against the law firm of Weber and O.C. and against the individual defendant lawyers is, a, is a without merit. They claim that the asserted claims do not show a violation of the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act because, number one, he did not send a request, Mr. Shanley did, and for validation to the individual third party defendants. It was only sent to the law firm of Weber and OCs. I don't want to make this worse, but just in case anyone's confused as what's going on, he files a what he styles a counterclaim against the lawyers. First of all, be a third party because the lawyers aren't aren't party to the initial action. They're they're not in it. They're not they're not they're not parties. They weren't served or whatever. It's absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. And he, and he has no basis for it in substance either. But the, but then the judge has to play around this because because it, it, the procedurally it's so messed up. Second, that as it relates to the law firm of Weber Renewal sees that a letter was sent with supporting documentation, thereby validating the account. That is the claim. And I will just say this. 
To begin with, the defendant's third party complaint was filed improperly. Initiation of an action against the law firm of Weber and OC's PC and individual attorneys with that firm should have been filed as a third party complaint. Neither the law firm Weber and OC's PLC nor the named individuals were parties to the principal complaint and therefore the pleading should have been filed as a third party complaint file, uh, naming the law firm itself, Weber and OC's PLC, as well as individual defendants, Michael OC, Suzanne Barta, Michael Kirschenheider, Jeffrey Werber and Sandra Francis as third party defendants. Make no mistake about it though, the court would gladly permit, and I read Mr. Shanley's brief with regard to how pro se litigants should in essence have rules construed more liberally in their favor so that if there's a technical violation of the court rules or a technical violation of, of filing of certain pleadings, that the court should permit it. And I have no difficulty permitting Mr. Shanley to file a third party complaint in the proper form as against Weber and OC's PLC and or against the individual defendants. However, the court must make a determination in fairness as to whether or not such a claim should be and could be possibly successful if the court were to allow somebody to file, in this case, Mr. Shanley, to file a third party complaint. Thank you, sir, Will Tackle. There is no evidence that the defendant sent a request to the individual attorneys no evidence what's okay i i don't mean to do this to you again but this is interesting so he's going to construe it as as properly filed uh so that he can so that he can deny it on its merits <laughs> so it sounds like it's nice but it really isn't so ever it's that would have required them individually to validate the debt to conform to the Fair Debt Collections Practice Act. There's no evidence at all anywhere that I saw in any documentation, which leads the court to believe that Mr. Shanley or somebody on his behalf sent a request to the individual attorneys. There is evidence that it was sent to the law firm of Weber and will cease. There is evidence that the law firm of Weber and will cease PC responded <clears throat> to that request for validation. There's no evidence that the validation documentation submitted was invalid under the Fair Debt Collection Practices Act. I've told you, Mr. Shanley, they don't have to produce a contract. They don't have to produce a written contract. When you use the credit card, the contract is formed, period, plain, simple. And then you're subject to the terms and conditions of the credit card agreement. In this case, first, as I said, there's no evidence that an individual letter was sent to the firm of, of uh, I'm sorry, to the individual lawyers. Therefore, they weren't subject to the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act. Therefore, I'm granting summary disposition in their favor. And quashing the summons and dismissing the third party or the counterclaim filed against them. Moreover, Weber and OCs, who would have been subject to the validation language of the FDCPA, because they were specifically sent a request, responded. There's no genuine issue as to any material fact here. There's no specific facts that the counter plaintiff has come forth with to establish a factual issue as to whether or not there was a violation. So therefore, 
defendants, third part, I'm going to say counter defendants, Welber and Olsees. Michael Olsees, Suzanne Barda, Michael Kirschenheider, Jeffrey Werber, and Sandra Francis are granted summary disposition. The summons is quashed, and the third party complaint slash counter complaint is dismissed. You lose, sir, on all fronts. Absolutely every way possible. Now, <laughs> that concludes this hearing. You wanted to move for sanctions. Just, what do you have to say about right that? Your Honor, other than the time and effort that has been put into this matter in responding, um, there's another case coming down the pipeline. I don't know if Mr. Shammy's been served with that case. It's another Bank of America case. Thank you. Um, if you do not exactly. award sanctions of any kind, then uh, I don't believe it would be fair for the attorneys in my law firm and Weber and to have to put additional time and effort on the next case. So I believe it's imperative that that you grant the sanctions at this time um, so that this doesn't happen again. Thank you. This is actually kind of interesting. So he, the, the, uh, the soft set loses on everything as he damn well should. Now we're just now we're just fussing about sanctions. The attorney makes the argument we'd let it go, but he's do he this is a repeat offender. This is what this guy does. So we we need to we need to stop it at some point, which is a fine argument. Thank you. Mr. Shanley. Your Honor, the last time I was here, you lectured me on that I should get a lawyer get a lawyer and pro se okay I'm yeah, not doing this pro se I'm not representing myself I am myself mm. I have an affidavit there that rebuts Bank of America's claim it's it's it's, it's in my paperwork I was trying to do you a favor, Mr. Shanley. I was trying to tell you, please consult with a lawyer so you don't proceed with lawsuits that are frivolous in nature and force the court to do something that I don't want to do. That's what my purpose was in telling you that you should get an attorney. You have every right to represent yourself, whether it's a $5 lawsuit or you're representing yourself because you're charged with a ser serious felony. Every defendant, every party in this country has the right to represent themselves, just like I have the right to give myself a root canal. I have the right to fix my arm. I wouldn't do it. I told you nicely, I think on this case, I've only seen one or two people do it adequately in my 28 year plus years on the bench and my 11 years as a lawyer. But that's neither here nor there. You have that right. The problem is here that you're abusing this system. That's what you're doing. You are abusing this system. Him, in my view, and the court finds that the primary purpose in, in initiating this action against these lawyers in this law firm was to harass, embarrass, or injure those individuals and that law firm. You had no reasonable basis to believe that the facts underlying the party's legal position were in fact true. And I'm finding that you advanced a frivolous claim in conjunction with that counterclaim complaint that you filed. Period. I'm not going to award it on the counterclaim versus the bank. I am going to award it, award sanctions on the counterclaim that was filed against the law firm and the individual lawyers. You don't get to do this. This is not some kind of a game. We don't think this is funny. I have a great sense of humor when I'm not in here, not in when not in here. This isn't some kind of an entertainment exercise. Well, it is now the question is, what kind of sanctions are you entitled to? 
And that's what you're going to have to grapple with. Because even though I think his conduct was outrageous, and I do think it was outrageous, and this record should reflect that this court finds the conduct was outrageous. But sanctions is a law firm entitled to when they represented themselves, Mr. Barr. Had you gone out and hired another law firm and paid them $400 an hour, a very experienced law firm, would have no difficulty in awarding recoupment of those attorney fees. The question is what kind of reasonable attorney fees is one entitled to and what types of sanctions is one entitled to when they've representing, represented themselves. So here's what you're going to do, please. Here's for us. And, and uh, it does not have to be lengthy. You can do it by Zoom, but you're going to prepare an order granting the, the motions for summary disposition based on the grounds I stated previously. This is the only thing the judge has problems with, which I get. I mean, he could just give it to his clerk, but effectively he wants the law firm to file a motion because he wants to know he wants someone else to provide the legal basis for it, which is totally understandable because he wants he wants to award attorneys fees, but he doesn't know if he can. Like he said, if, if they hired another firm, then they'd get a bill. We, we could quantify it, liquidate the damages quite easily, but they could make an argument. You know, uh, it's it's your own firm. I mean, I can make a good argument uh, that, that that they're not they're using this time, wasting this time here instead of working on other, you know, projects to make money, um, which, which is a good argument. But I, but he just wants the, the basis to do it. And he and he doesn't know it off the top of his head. So he's making them file a motion just here 10 minutes ago. Then I'd like you to file a motion. It doesn't have to be lengthy. But you're going to have to set forth what sanctions you believe that you're entitled to. To the extent that you believe that you're entitled to attorney fees, the law firm can set forth how much time was expended, what their hourly rate was, and why those attorney fees would be reasonable under the circumstances. But I have to tell you, I'm going back to... whether or not it's appropriate for a law firm to collect sanctions that's representing itself on a frivolous action that's filed against it. My gut says it should be. My brain says I don't know that it can be. He's being totally honest. Am I making sense? Yes, Your Honor. I, be I believe if I believe if there wasn't a second file coming down the pipeway, I would be amenable to walking out of this courtroom and being done with this action. Uh, well, that's neither here nor there. I don't even know if that case is going to be assigned to me, and I'll rule if it is on the facts and the law pertaining to that particular case. Um, that's up to you guys. But to the extent I'm going to grant your motion, you can put it right in there. The court finds this was a frivolous action. And uh, so your order should say order granting summary disposition on the two claims. And you can put that in. And you can also add in finding counterclaim filed versus law firm and lawyers was frivolous within the meaning of the statute, MCL 600.25913A, I and two, small i and small two, and that the court is directing that you file a written motion and it itemize your, um, what costs and sanctions you believe you're entitled to. And again, you're going to have to focus a bit on whether it's appropriate that a law firm representing itself is reimbursed. I'm not getting into whether other cases should or shouldn't be filed. I don't, like I said, I don't even know if that case is assigned to me. Um, is it? Do you know? I don't. Do you know, Mr. Shanley? I'm sorry. I do not know. But that's the ruling. Any clarification needed? No, Your Honor, if no, 
Are you going to rule on my motion to dismiss? I'm denying it for the reason stated. <laughs> Dummy, he already ruled on it. <laughs> I just love that. I love that. He, not, not realizing he lost 10 minutes ago. <laughs> I object. I know. You object. It's okay. You can appeal. I'm not always right, Mr. Shanley. You're on right to establish jurisdiction. All right. Listen, I don't want to hear it. You can take all this transcript and go to a reviewing court. Have you proposed orders? Can I present them? Let me see them. You can't. The top one is the proposed order dismissing the counterclaim against Bank of America. The second one is the proposed order dismissing the case with prejudice as to whoever in all season all named attorneys. Um, if, if the court wishes to exclude the sanctions portion of that, I'd prefer, uh, I'd prefer, I'll sign your order dismissing counterclaim with prejudice versus Bank of America. I believe, Your Honor, Weber and Olsies is not, there's a chance that we're not going to be filing the I don't, motion as to. I still want the order to reflect what happened, and this doesn't do it. Okay. I get it. The attorney's like, we don't want to waste one more minute on this nonsense. We don't want to look up this stuff. This guy's not collectible. He's not paying his credit card. He sure as hell isn't going to pay any sanctions. We just like it ordered so that uh, to slow him down. That's all. I want you to put in there the court further fines after you set forth the preamble that I'm grant that I'm granting the some I'm dismissing the count di dismissing the quashing the summons in dismissing the third party slash counter complaint against the individual lawyers and the corporation that the court found that the counter plaintiff's action filed against uh, the law firm and the individual lawyers was frivolous pursuant to the meaning of 600, write that down, 600.2591. And that the court has invited the plaintiff to file, the, the lawyers and the law firm to file a motion for imposition of sanctions, itemizing that which they believe that they're entitled to. Right. But, but the court would, if you're going to ask for attorney fees, and I want it right in the body of the order, the court's going to need authority to award attorney fees to a law firm that was representing itself. So that's it. I'm handing you. He, he's dying to do it. He just wants he just wants to know, know that it's okay first. <laughs> he's got a million issues in front of him every day. This is insane. There is no reason to sue these attorneys whatsoever. There's no basis for it. So he doesn't ha have a million cases where that's occurred. He doesn't know if he can if he can award attorney's fees to a firm representing itself. That's the question in the judge's mind. You know. But if 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 he if you told him he could, he'd be like, hell yes, let's do it. The order on the top. You can keep the other order in the file if you'd like. And uh, that is it. Uh, Linda, uh, that's all right. Yes, Your Honor. No, that's okay. I got it. Okay. What's today? 13. Yeah, you got to wait for it. It does get slightly worse. <laughs> you think it's over, but no. <laughs> He's got one more argument in him. You know what it is.
if you would like so you realize we still have bank of america's claim going right yes i i, I do believe that I do believe that their motion for summary disposition shall be forthcoming, but I do also believe that this court has the authority to grant a judgment at any time. Hang on one second. Let me make a note here. Uh -huh. But to So the, your order, should, your new order, should also include a dismiss uh, denial of defendant's motion to dismiss. So, I really want you to put in there that I want you to file a motion if, if you choose to go forth. Court finds that it's frivolous, it is requiring that a motion itemizing sanctions requested shall be filed, is to be filed if the parties agree, decide to go forth with it, and the court would like them to specifically address the reasonableness of attorney fees when the law firm is representing itself and the individual lawyers are being represented by their law firm, at least the law firm that they're a, party, a part of. No, you're going to have to file, I'm sorry, you're going to have to file a motion for a summary disposition on the principal claim if you That's wish right. to have one, okay? Thank you, sir. Uh, anything else, Mr. Roberta? No, sir. Anything else, Mr. Shannon? Am I under this, am I to understand that you're dismissing my affidavit of facts in this matter? <laughs> I, I think I said what I was doing. I'm dismissing the counterclaim that you filed, and I'm dismissing the, it's, I'm not dismissing your affidavit. I'm saying your counterclaim against Bank of America is not proceeding, and your claims against Weber and Olsis and the individual lawyers is not proceeding. I'm throwing them out for the reasons that I stated. Here's your order, Mr. Gardner. Have a good day, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Ah, oh, well, there you have it. He had to ask about his affidavit, of course. <laughs> you don't dismiss an affidavit. You d dismiss a complaint or a, a motion. Or you, it, it just displays a fundamental misunderstanding of everything at all levels, which we already knew. But it's it's just funny. It's deliciously stupid. It's so good. <laughs> that one started strong with the with the file drop and the and the crazy intro and all that. And it was it was good all the way through. It was good all the way through. the 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 attorney uh, they, they won on everything except the except the underlying claim. They didn't get the judgment, but that's understandable. He's he's trying to get rid of he he just got rid of all the crazy counter claim slash third party claim stuff, and uh, and you know he wanted to put in the order that uh, that this was uh, what's the word I can't think of it frivolous. You know, for future judges to know about, or or himself for that matter, um, you know. So the the guy lost on everything. That going forward, th there may or may not be a motion for sanctions, and uh, and they're going to have to motion up to get actual judgment against him, which they will. That will be granted. He he made charges on a card and pay them. I'm I'm quite confident of that. Ah. I had to squeeze it in. Okay. Actually, I have to go to court. Thank you all for coming out. Nice to see you. I'll see you soon.